The second indication then, and still without going into any of the hadith, is the feeling that you get from music. It does not bring you closer to Allah. Even the biggest music lover, get a Muslim who is the biggest music lover, he will not be pleased if he hears rap music in the masjid. Why? Because he knows this is not a feeling you're supposed to get in the masjid. We're talking about someone who is the biggest music lover in the community. If he enters the Jum'ah and he finds the Imam app on the member with a big uh, boom box, then the Imam hits play and then a funky beat comes over and then the Imam starts to freestyle. Yes? The biggest music lover in the audience will become upset and offended. Why? Because they know this is something that is totally opposite of the feeling that he came to get. He came to be reminded of Allah Azza wa Jal and to listen to the ayat and the Quran and the ahadith which take him in one direction but the feeling that you get from music takes you in the opposite direction. And that's why many many years ago the early scholars of Islam they used to say that music and the Quran cannot be combined in the heart of the believer. There's not enough room in your heart for both of them. You either love one or the other. And like I said, you try that and test that when you get in someone's vehicle, you find they either have music tapes or they have Qur'an tapes. They listen to one or the other. And the Qur'an, it takes you in a direction where it prevents you from following your desires and it commands chastity and it commands modesty and it controls these desires and prevents you from following the steps of the shaitan. And music takes you in a direction that's totally opposite. So of the feelings that music causes, it causes people uh, to feel less shame. They feel a lack of shame and they're less shy. And they're not embarrassed, male or female. You see when there's loud music played, they're not very embarrassed to jump up and down and twirl and fall on the ground and get up again. They're not embarrassed to do that. And the women are not embarrassed to do that. Have you ever heard of a female dancer who was too shy because there were men in the room? She said, I don't want to dance, there are too many men watching me. Or I'm not dressed properly, I'm not covered right. Rarely is it associated with haya. You, rarely is it associated with these feelings of iman. But you find these people, they don't care. And notice how, when people repent, and they come back to Allah, they usually stop going to nightclubs and parties. Why is that? Because they know these are bad places, and these places are also associated with music. The second thing concerning the, the feeling that you get from music is that it causes this fitna, it causes this, uh, it arouse, arouses desires, the sexual desires in people. And even the fitna of the voice of women. And so it's not just enough that the voice of women is enough to stir emotions in a man, but now these female singers, they're purposely making their voice softer and they're dancing in ways that are sexually suggestive and they're not wearing proper clothing. So what do you expect? Except that the man's heart is going to be moved by that. And his feelings are going to be moved by that. And this is something that even Christians are aware of. There's a church called the Church of Christ. That's it. That's the name of it. And they don't have, they don't believe in music in church. They don't believe in dancing. They look at it as sexually suggestive. And it's so surprising and shocking when Muslims see that there's absolutely nothing wrong with this type of behavior. When we look at the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jal says, for the women, وَلَا يَضْرِبْنَ بِأَرْجُلِهِنَّ لِيَعْلَمَ مَا يُخْفِينَ مِنْ زِينَتِهِنَّ وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Here Allah is saying to the women that they should not strike their feet in order to draw attention to their hidden ornaments. So forget the voice, the soft voice of the woman while she's shaking her hair from left and right and dancing and singing and jumping up and down. Allah is forbidding the Muslim women who are covered from head to toe to not strike their feet in a loud way to, to, on the ground so that their ankle bracelets and whatever ornaments they're wearing will shake and make that sound and men will just know. They will not see anything. They will just know that this woman is or, you know, adorned with these things. If Allah is preventing this voice, what about then the woman coming and telling, you know, saying sweet things and sweet words? Yeah? Okay. So, the music also then, the effects of it, it can move you in various ways. There was an, uh, an Arab musician, his name was Al-Farabi. This is from the early Muslims or 
from the past generations and it is said that he would play his instrument and sing in a certain way and the listeners would cry and then he would play and sing in a certain way and then the people would laugh and then he would play and sing in a certain way and the people would sleep and then he would walk out so do not tell me that it does not affect people's behavior or how they act and on a final note on the feelings which is better for you and brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is better for your heart and strengthens your iman definitely it's the Quran and it's not listening to something like music so how can it be the case and how can we know this answer and yet people listen to more music than they do to the Quran